another fun-filled episode of At The Lathe. Now, I was so excited to get back to the skew uh, that I jumped right into the video last time, uh, planing cut with the skew, that I kind of left out a rather important uh, topic, which is how do you configure a skew? How do you grind it? How do you sharpen it? What angles and stuff do you use? Now, like many things in wood turning, uh, how to set up a skew is one of those things that if you were to ask 10 turners, you'd probably get 11 answers. But on the other hand, I've never really liked the advice that you just got to find out what works for yourself, uh, at least not without providing some kind of information that you can take and figure out what works for you in your context. So what I'm going to do is point out the different parameters of a skew and show how as you vary those parameters, how it affects the way the skew behaves and point out where on the spectrum that I like to set those parameters. Uh, and that way you'll have the information that you need to figure out what works for you. So a good place to start with any tool uh, is with the bevel angle. And a skew has what's known as an included angle, which is just a fancy way of saying we actually have to gr grind two surfaces in order to get our sharp edge. And a good place to start, I think, with any tool uh, is a bevel angle of about 40 degrees. Uh, I find that uh, 40 degrees will do a good job cutting almost any kind of wood and as well uh, when you're riding the bevel with a, a bevel angle of about 40 degrees it has a nice angle that tends to glide over the surface so you don't end up rubbing the bevel too hard. If you have a, a, a wider bevel angle you tend to push into the wood a little bit more you might uh, tend to put too much pressure on the bevel. Uh, a little bit narrower and you might not have enough support might the tool might get a little bit unruly and I'll pretty much stick with 40 degrees uh, with any tool uh, until I have a reason uh, to deviate from that uh, for instance uh, my 40 40 bowl gouge I love to use um, has a 40 degree bevel angle uh, but at some point if you're doing a bowl that's rather deep um, in order to maintain bevel contact, the, uh, the side, the, the tool itself, will actually bottom out and, and start coming in contact with the rim of the bowl. And so there's no way to maintain uh, bevel contact to the, to all the way to the bottom of the bowl. In that case, I'll switch to something a bowl gouge with something maybe a 60 degree bevel angle so I can finish the job all the way to the bottom. So why would you deviate from 40 degrees with a skew? Say, why would we go a little bit wider, say 50 degrees? Uh, well, what I had read initially was that um, a wider bevel angle will tend to work better on dense exotic woods and figured woods. Um, so I tried that out and I find, found that to actually be a little bit better. Um, you could still, if you were careful with uh, a 40 degree bevel and made some light cuts at the end, uh, you could just, you can get about a pretty good uh, finish, just as good as the 50 degree. And so if I was to just do, say, a couple of one-off projects with um, figured wood or with uh, some dense exotics, I probably wouldn't bother changing to a 50 degree bevel angle. Um, but let's say if I was doing a whole production run of something, say a whole production run of pepper shakers, pepper grinders, um, it's probably worth your time to have a skew uh, that's 50 degrees. It will save you time in the end. Now what about the other direction? When would we want to go more narrow than 40 degrees? Um, and what I had read in this instance is that that narrow, narrower bevel angle works well on soft woods uh, like fir and poplar and perhaps even alder. And so I tried that out as well, and I found it was a little better. Um, again, if you were to take it slow at the end and take some light passes with the 40 degree bevel, you could, could get just uh, as good a surface. Uh, but again, if I was doing, say, a small home improvement project, and I was making custom balusters for staircase, and I had to do 40 or 50 of them, definitely worth uh, changing the bevel angle to say 30 degrees that's going to save me a lot of time uh, at the end of the pro by the end of the project. Now the next parameter on a skew is the skew angle exactly where a skew gets its name and I usually measure that from the side of the tool and then across the cutting angle so this uh, particular skew has about a 70 degree skew. Now I have to admit uh, when I went to go make this video I was prepared to say that 70 degrees was the ideal skew angle and that was based on some past experience where I had ground a skew to about 45 degrees and I found it very unruly. I was getting a lot of captures and stuff so 
Uh, and in preparation for this video, I did it again. I took one of my old um, bang up skews. I put a 45, about a 50 degree skew angle on it. Uh, but I didn't find it unruly this time, so what gives? So I experimented for a few days and I think what I figured out was that the wood doesn't care about the skew angle. Uh, in other words, the angle that the cutting edge makes with the tool. Uh, it only cares about the cutting angle. In other words, the angle that the cutting edge makes with the direction of the wood. It doesn't know the difference if I have that cutting angle at 45 degrees with a 70 degree skew or whether I have that angle at 45 degrees with a 50 degree skew on my angle. The wood doesn't know and doesn't care. So what it comes down to uh, for the turner is the handle position. So given the same cutting angle with a 70 degree skew, my handle comes off about 20 degrees from the cut from the wood direction, whereas a 50 degree a skew is going to come off uh, almost straight. And the other difference is the acuteness or the obtuseness of the long and the short point. So a 50 degree uh, skew angle is going to give us a very pointy long point and an obtuse uh, short point. And a 70 degree uh, skew angle is going to give us a, a much less pointy long point and a little bit sharper of, uh, of a, a short point. So where does that leave us? If it's just a matter of, of two handle position and the acuteness and the obtuseness of the points, what skew angle should we use? Well, well what I'd like to do is go through and show the differences uh, of the different uh, skew angles. Uh, but first, I need to take a little bit of a, a tangent here and show something about uh, cutting beads because it will be relevant as we start to look at the different skew angles. So what I found, I'm going to go and color in the bevel here just so you can see what's going on. Uh, is that when you go to roll a bead, if I was to leave this uh, tool uh, in line with the direction of the wood and try to make a uh, turn a bead at this point, um, you'll see that the bevel, you'll see that the bevel is rubbing just behind the area uh, that's doing the cutting and now if I was to instead uh, use more of an angle put the tool at more of an angle and cut the same bead you'll see it's doing exactly the same thing it's still rubbing the bevel just behind the part of the cutting edge uh, that's doing the work now if you were to tran if I was to go back to the case where I have the tool in line with the direction of the cutting uh, the di uh, direction of the wood, if I was to transfer that to the wood, I would be cutting so my direction of wood is about like is like this, and my cutting edge is here, and my bevel is just behind it and I'm not sure why this is, but for some reason when that's the case, as you can see. If I was to come off the bevel uh, just a little bit, it almost instantly starts to spiral back. Uh, but in the case, if I have the tool at more of an angle, uh, now instead of my cutting direction, again, is this direction, um, I'm cutting here, but my bevel is off to the side a little bit. And that seems to be much more tame. So if I was to come in uh, with the tool at a little bit of an angle, and I start to come off my bevel, it starts to dig in a little bit, but it's not spiraling back. And you can actually recover from this. And you'll see this happen sometimes. You'll see a little, uh, it'll scoop out a little bit, uh, and then you're able to, a lot of times, get back and control the tool. It's still not desirable, but it's a lot better, a lot easier to clean this up than it is that backward spiral. So uh, what I found is a good rule of thumb. If I'm gonna take the edge of my tool here and my cutting angle here, and if I split that in half, roughly, and I cut in that direction, uh, I, I have much better control over the bevel contact when I'm cutting a bead. And that'll be important when we start to look at the different um, cutting angles. So in other words, I always try to move the tool in the direction of that arrow when I'm cutting a bead.
All right, so first up, let's take a look at a skew angle of about 90 degrees. Um, so essentially, this is a skewless skew, uh, also known as a beating and parting tool. And as the name implies, that's what some turners like to use this for, is for doing beads and for doing parting. Uh, and, it, and it is very good at peeling cuts, especially if you want to do something like you would normally do with uh, a, a parting tool. It's very, because it has, because you can peel straight in, it's very good at making tenons. And I can simply clean up the edge of the shoulder cut. Very fast, very good at that. Um, the other thing a lot of turners like, turners who use the beading and parting tool like, is that when you're cutting a bead, I cut one side with one corner, I don't have to flip the tool over, so I just come back the other side. But a couple of, of downsides uh, that I think that comes with a beading and parting tool. Uh, one is because the tool is angled straight across, I don't have the flexibility. If I roll it over, my tool handle is in the same position. And sometimes it's useful to be able to get that tool at a new position. Something might be in the way. Um, another uh, thing that happens is because, in this case, I still want to split my angle, so I want to make my bead in this direction. Uh, when I'm cutting to the right, from, from right to left, I have, a, being a right-hander, I have lots of visibility. I can see what's going on with the cutting edge, I can see what's going on with the shape uh, of the bead as it proceeds. But when I come back the other way, I have to move my whole body over here. I can try to get on my tippy toes and look down and see what's going on. But I start to lose uh, sight of the cutting edge and I have a hard time, I'm looking at the bead from a different perspective, so it can be a little bit hard to judge. Um, and as well, you lose a little bit of versatility because it is useful to have one, uh, one point to be a little bit more acute and one to be more obtuse. There are certain advantages, certain cuts work better with one or the other. All right, so moving on to the next uh, skew angle. Uh, this skew is set at about 70 degrees, and this is the grind that I've thought for a couple of years now was the ideal uh, skew angle, and it is a pretty good angle. It's very versatile. Um, you can do, you can still, you can you peel really well with this uh, with this bevel angle, and in fact, you can still do tenons almost as good as you can with a, be be a beating and parting tool. As I get down to my diameter, I do have a little bit of an angle there, but I can simply just slide it over and I've got a tenon almost as fast as I did with the beading and parting tool. Um, it, also, it, it does light peeling cuts really nicely. Uh, I can move the handle, uh, flip it over and get a slightly different location on my handle. Whether I can do that whether I'm planing for a long, short point leading or I can flip it over and do a long point leading. I've got my two handles in a slightly different position. And you can turn these fairly well. And, and I would say the only disadvantage with this, the main disadvantage with this um, skew angle is I still don't have great visibility when I'm rolling from left to right. Uh, because that long point I, uh, gets in the way of where I can't quite see. Um, and I lose sight of my cutting edge, and I'm still over here trying to get out of the way of the cut, and I can't really see the profile from the same perspective as when I roll the bead from right to left. So let's get a little bit more radical, and this skew has a skew angle of about 60 degrees. Uh, and this is a pretty good skew angle too. Um, it starts to be not as good at peeling, I have to make sure the handle is starting to get further over to do the same peeling cuts. Uh, a lot of times I like to peel straight in, but now I'm starting to cut at too much of an angle. I'm starting to cut a little bit into end grain. Uh, it, it, you can still do the job. It's not as nice for doing peeling and tendons as the other two. Uh, and also, I start to, as when I start to uh, do my planing cuts, I'm already at a 30 degree uh, cutting angle. And so, um, I, if I bring it over about 15 more degrees, and I'm, about, I'm at about the limit. I don't want to go start cutting at too near of a cutting angle, I start getting tear out. And if I wanted to go a little bit 
less of a cutting needle, now I have to actually start dragging the tool. But as that point starts to become more acute, I have a lot of vis visibility when I'm cutting beads. It's even when doing the bead cuts, I can have I have perfectly good uh, line of sight to the sh the long point, so I can see exactly what's going on. I can see a little gap that I need uh, between the wood and the cutting edge, so I don't get a catch. I'm still splitting the angle, so now I'm cutting at about right there, and so my tool is starting to straighten out a little bit. So I have a little bit better visibility. Uh, turning beads to the, from left to right now. So I'm starting to give up I'm starting to give up a certain benefit with peeling and planing and making tenons but I'm starting to pick up an advantage uh, when I'm doing bead cuts and, uh, and turning beads. So finally a skew angle of about 50 degrees, almost 45, about 50 degrees, pretty radical um, skew angle right there. Now this much skew angle uh, is going to really stink when it comes to doing things like uh, peeling cuts um, uh, and if I try to, if I try to uh, peel straight in, I'm actually cutting into those end grain fibers. It still works, you can still get the job done, not as nice as the other uh, uh, not as nice as the other um, skew angles for that, for that kind of job. Um, as well, when I'm planing with this, I'm already at almost a 40, uh, if I just rolled at the tool over five degrees, I'm already at 45 degrees. So I'm getting close to how narrow I want to be able to cut. Uh, remember when we cut uh, long grain and, and spindle work, we don't want to use too narrow of a cutting angle. We'll start getting into the fiber and start tearing out. So I don't really have much movement with the with the tool handle when I'm planing. Uh, I can come up um, with a long point and I, it tends to stick in a lot. Uh, so not very good for planing. However, a, a, a tool with a radical uh, screw angle like this is really awesome when it comes to uh, cutting bees. I have a super lot of, I have all the visibility in the world that I need looking at that tip. And the tips kind of swept back. So I tend to be sl slicing the fibers a little more. So not only does it get into tight, tighter places, it makes a cleaner cut when doing the V groove. Um, and also, if I go and split this angle again, if I split the angle for doing my beads, I can almost keep this tool straight down now. And so I have, I can have my face lined up right in the center of the bead and I can turn the beads on both sides. So this is, this is a really good skew angle for turning beads. Probably the best skew angle if you're going to be turning a lot of beads. So I barely, as I switch to the other side, I barely have to even move the tool as I flip it over. All right, so the third parameter is the actual shape of the cutting edge. This skew has quite a bit of radius on it, uh, whereas this skew is pretty much straight across. And so what's the advantage of one or the other? Now, for a lot of stuff, I find it doesn't really matter that much. The only thing that really matters is the, uh, the cutting angle uh, and the vicinity of wherever, whatever part of the cutting edge is, is doing the work. Um, but when it comes to peeling cuts, I find the radius, it can be very useful because instead of, instead of engaging, whereas if I have a straight edge, if I I'm try to do a regular peeling cut, I'm engaging the whole cutting edge all at once, and sometimes that can be a little bit abrupt. Um, uh, whereas if I have a radius, it tend, the cut eases in a little bit better. Uh, and also because it's actually angled on the either side, it tends to slice the fibers a little bit, it gives you a little bit better of a uh, finish and as well because of that with the radius you can actually do some light peeling cuts and actually be quite a respectable finish something you could probably stand with at least 220 maybe even 320. So I would say that's the main advantage of having the radius on the skew.
So you may have noticed I didn't actually recommend a, um, a skew angle yet, and that's because I wanted to talk about it uh, in conjunction with um, the radius uh, in order to um, give some recommendations. Now, if I can only have one skew, I would probably take a three quarter inch skew uh, with maybe a 60 degree uh, skew angle. Um, that's gonna be able to, I, assuming a general purpose work, um, uh, I can do, I can still peel with it. I can have a pretty good visibility when turning beads. I have a pointy enough point that I can do bead grooves. Now, if you don't do beads a lot, you could uh, you could do the same thing and go with uh, a 70 degree bevel angle. Um, and I also, because I do like to do peeling cuts, I would put a certain, a some amount of radius on the cutting edge. Now, if I could only have two skews, I would probably take a, a one inch skew uh, with a 70 degree um, skew angle and, uh, and a good amount of radius because I'm probably gonna use this tool for making uh, tool handles, maybe making table legs. And so I'm gonna do a lot of peeling. I'm gonna use the corners for turning my beads, but I'm gonna use a lot of this middle part for doing peeling and planing. Uh, and for the second skew, I would go with a half inch skew uh, with, with a 50 degree uh, skew, skew angle. Um, I can turn beads all day long with this. And uh, you don't want anything wider than a half an inch because most of this middle part is, most of the middle of the skew I end up using for, for peeling cuts anyway. So I don't need a lot of width. And the extra width is only, uh, uh, only going to impede your visibility uh, when you're turning beads anyways. So a half inch, 50 degrees, and no, no radius on this one because radius doesn't really buy you anything uh, turning beads and cutting bead grooves. And finally, uh, I don't know if it's so much of a parameter, but something I like to do on skews is I actually like, you may notice the edges of all my skews, but the very edges are very are, are shiny. And that's because I like to hone my skews to get them really, really sharp. And uh, honing is something that's becoming more and more popular. Um, I don't hone everything. Uh, for me, it's an issue of what's it cost me to hone and what do I, what benefit do I get out of it? And with uh, a skew, I actually find it's very easy to hone because this, when this came off the grinder, it's actually slightly hollow. And so it's just a matter of taking something like a, a, a diamond hone. And these are pretty cheap. I think they run about eight, 12 bucks the max. Um, you balance it on, you can see it also gets shiny here, but that's not relevant. Um, you basically balance it across the bevel. So you're actually making contact with just the tip and then the, uh, the heel of the bevel and you just rub it uh, and you only need a very small amount uh, of shine at the edge. It doesn't have, you don't have to shine very back very far. When I first regrind these, you can barely see the shiny edge. And instead of going back to the grinder, I just keep honing and honing and honing. And eventually at some point, um, that uh, shiny spot will start to grow and grow and grow. And when it gets about a 32nd of an inch, it, you have to take off too much material to hone, and at that point I'll go back to the grinder and I'll go back to honing until once again uh, the shiny spot grows. Now, uh, so I actually find it less work to hone when it comes to skews as opposed to something like a gouge. It takes a lot of effort um, because of that curved outside and you have the flute. And a lot of times, you know, for instance, if you were doing, had a gouge you were using for roughing out green logs, you're cutting through dirt and bark and you're ruining the edge anyway. So there's no point in honing something like that. But definitely uh, it um, saves you time honing a uh, skew. Uh, the upside is you get a really nice clean surface uh, with, with a honed uh, edge on a skew. And the other thing is the sharper the tool, um, the more it cuts through the wood. And that means less energy is transferring from the wood into the tool which means it's easier to control. A sharp edge is much easier to control. Uh, and if you get a catch, you're more likely to cut through the catch. And you'll end up with a, a flaw that you'll have to fix, but it's much better than uh, getting that spiral back. Now there's one more grind, uh, one more uh, configuration with a skew that uh, not only would I be remiss in not pointing out, I'd probably catch some flack from the turners who really like this one for, for, for omitting it. Uh, and this is something close to a laser skew. It's not exactly a laser skew. That is Allen laser. That's his uh, grind. Um, Allen has a little bit more of a straight 
shot off the long off the long uh, the long point uh, before it goes into his radius, and I, I kind of go into the radius right away. Um, very subtle difference. And the interesting thing about this setup is that even though from point to point uh, it's a 70 degree skew angle, at the long point I actually have uh, 90 degrees. And so it's as if this half of the skew is kind of like my beading and parting tool, uh, the left half of my beading and parting tool. And um, the skew angle on the right uh, uh, at, at the short point is actually almost, it's right around 50 degrees, just like my really radical, it's like the right half of my, uh, what I'm calling my detail uh, skew. And then I have all of this uh, 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 radius cutting edge uh, in the middle. And I really like, and it's, a, it's an inch and a quarter thick, a uh, wide. And um, I've seen it, this grind also on smaller with skews, but personally I find that the uh, radius starts to get uh, too uh, too extreme. Um, but this inch and a quarter version uh, is my favorite skew for doing things like furniture legs. So there's lots of stretches of slight tapers and, and gentle curves, and I've got a lot of cutting edge here that I can use for doing my peeling cuts. And not only do I have a lot of cutting edge for my peeling cuts, I have about 90 degrees of range that I can do my peeling cut in. So I can have my tool at about 45 degrees. I can do a peeling cut way down here, all the way to my, uh, where my um, tool is straight, flip it over, and I can put, go all the way back to 45 degrees on this side. So I can do a peeling cut in almost any position, which is really nice for doing furniture legs. Um, as well, because this is squared off, uh, at the long point, it's really nice for doing tenons. A lot of times if you're doing, say, a stool, you'll even make tenons. Uh, it makes quick work of doing, uh, of putting tenons on different, on different uh, furniture legs. And because you'll have an occasional bead on, uh, say, a shaker table leg or something like that, um, because this, uh, the angle, that the, the, the um, skew angle at the, at the heel, it's about 50 degrees, it's still really good at rolling beads. And although I'll lose some visibility just because of the size of the skew, I can still have the tool almost, uh, almost perpendicular to the work that is parallel to the direction of the wood. So I can still see pretty good to make a bead on this side. Now the disadvantage I would say with this kind of skew, uh, like I said, if you try to put this on a smaller skew, I find that the radius gets too extreme. And so uh, it's better for a larger skew, I find, uh, which means for larger work. It's not very, I wouldn't use this on smaller work. Um, the other thing is, uh, this is a problem both with the beading and parting tools and uh, with this squared off edge, is that I find it can be I can't really see what's going on with the toe, and I, when I'm doing a V-cut, I always want to have, let's do it on this side, it's easier to see. I always want to have a little bit of a space between my cutting edge and, uh, and, and the work, and I find because the cutting edge is a, little bit more, a lot more forward than it would be on something like this, that it's much easier to get catches when you're doing V-grooves as the pair or something like that. But other than that, really great tool I find for doing, um, for doing furniture legs. So quite a bit of information uh, just for setting up a skew there, uh, perhaps even more than expected. Uh, but hopefully I've been able to organize it uh, to a point where you have an idea of how you want to set up your skews, depending on what kind of work you're doing. And by all means, experiment, especially if you can find an old beat up skew uh, that you can sacrifice trying different, uh, different kinds of setups. And by all means, uh, as you're on your wood, wood turning journey, uh, if the uh, kind of work you do changes, uh, then by all means reevaluate the way you set up not just your skews but all your tools and uh, regrind them, reshape them uh, as you need to. So uh, that's what I have for you this time. And so until next time, get out in the shop and play with your skews. Mm -hmm.